Hey, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Venture Talks. Uh, yes, you are not looking at Amber, and you are not looking at Amber. Not the really guys not. are taking over yes, today. Sir. Yes, Super sir. excited for that. I'm yes. Matthew. I am one of the pastors here at Venture. And my name is Rob. Um, I'm not one of the pastors here, but I am the worship director here for, for Venture. Yeah. Yeah. You, are you pretty yeah, solid for, about that? For Venture. He's confident yeah. like, about that, I, I like, promise you. I was like, I cannot forget that again. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot forget that again. Rob, yes. people are like hearing your beautiful voice. Yes, it's, yeah. it's different. It's it different. is. Usually not in front of the camera. But yeah. It's all good. There's usually a mic in front of you. Yeah. What is that for? People probably wonder like, that guy never says anything in that mic. Yeah, no, they they always, the people will come up to me and be like, you know what? I don't think your mic was on. And I'm like, <laughs> thank God it wasn't. It usually, um, as the worship director, I, I, um, I get to give cues to the band or uh, if anything goes wrong or anything like that i can let the band know uh how we can get back on track so it's it's uh it's very nerve-wracking at times but we have a great team and honestly i'm just i'm blessed to work with all of them yeah, yeah. super awesome we have yeah. a great team what, what he's trying to say is he yells at people through the mic <laughs> when they're no. not listening to him uh, yeah no no i know no. i know, I know. <laughs> yeah. rob's not that kind of leader mm. Uh, Rob, you and I have known each other for quite a long time now, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. We've done a few seasons together in life. Yeah, absolutely. We've done youth ministry together. Yes. We were babies. Goodness gracious. You remember that? I do remember that. But yeah. that was when I really, I think, sprouted legs. You did? I, oh, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. I was. I got to lead some of the students over there, and oh, my goodness gracious. It was, yeah. you know, students, um, it's the toughest crowd to lead in, but it really teaches you how to uh, lead adults. Cause it's hard to get their attention. Yeah. It's oh my gosh. Short but, attention span. Yeah, yeah. For but sure. but it honestly it, it helped me out. It helped me out so much. So shout out to venture students. Goodness yeah. Gracious. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people don't really know a lot about you, so I, I want them to kind of get a little piece of who you are and and what yeah. you love to do in life. And so, yeah. uh, first of all, I want people to know that uh, Robert uh, is taken. Uh, he is engaged. <laughs> yes, sir. Dulce, I want to make sure that's clear on the front end. Uh, you're probably on the live right now, so your best emoji for that. <laughs> uh, just recently got engaged. Yeah. So, yeah, let's give him yeah. a round. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that, that's yeah. happening this year. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah. I'm very, very excited. We've been dating for, it's going to be seven years. So I met her in high school. And a lot of people will, will say, like, why did you date for that long? But... Honestly, a lot of people don't know we we met when we were like 17. So, and we're 23 now? Wow. Gosh, my gosh. So old. You're not my old, gosh. Dulce. You're not old. This guy's super old right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dulce, you're not. He yeah, is. no, no, she's not. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Oh. And you get, and and, and uh, I always he's probably going to like get mad at me for this, but I always just think like, man, Rob, I I, I admire you. I want to say that. You're not going to get mad at that. I admire Rob because I've <laughs> I've seen him grow. I've seen some of these stages of life. I've, sure. I've just seen the, the man that you've become. And I don't know anybody that can say that they have built their own house with their own two hands. Yeah. <laughs> and literally Rob is in the middle of building their house with his own two hands. Yeah. So um, after he's done building their house, he's going to build my house. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. He doesn't know this Dude, yet. No way. Oh my goodness yeah, gracious. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an eight bedroom because <laughs> uh, we have four kids and Anna wants four more. So. Aye, aye. 
Um, yeah, if she could have four more, she would, by the way. Pray for your pastor over here. <laughs> Crazy stuff, right? <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. My, um, my dad, I remember, he would always tell me uh, when I was growing up, he would go, son, I, I built my house when I was 20 years old. He's like, so when are you going to do it? And I, I remember growing up thinking like, oh my gosh, I have to build my own house. Like, how am I going to do that? And growing up, I did not want to be in construction. I just remember him, him being like, um, you know, son, you know, you're getting older and like, you know, you have a girlfriend. Like, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to provide for her? What house are you going to put her in? I thought, well, you have a property, right? You got some space on the land, right? Yeah, and yeah flip so, it. Yeah, but we're... That's awesome. Yeah, we're very blessed. I love my dad and he's... He's helped us out. He is a good guy. I love Jesse. He is an awesome, awesome guy. Yeah. Well, uh, next Sunday, uh, weather permitting, uh, we are going to be in person. Woo! Heck yeah. Yes. We get excited for in person. Oh my gosh, yes. We're going to be at Rancho uh, Cielo. Mm -hmm. Um, What's your favorite part of our in-person services? For in-person services? Man, you know what? Um, It's honestly the the setup. And when you're in it, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. It does not feel like the set is the best part of it. But that's where all, all of the, the community happens, where, where you get to um, just get to talk to people, get to, to meet other people outside of the ministries that you're in. Like, we're, we get to be a part of, uh, like, like, worship and, of course, preaching. And Matt's out there, out there with us, too, when we're setting up. But we get to talk to, uh, you know, V-Kids, yeah. leaders, um, Venture students, like everybody, and it's, yeah, and and that's where our, I feel like that's where our ministry has really like grown. Like yeah. we're not just separate groups everywhere. We're really the church. We're right. really venture together, and yeah. it's the, it's it's so weird. I remember um, back in 2019 when um, we were obviously still going every Sunday to Sunday, but I remember we were on on the phone and we were talking about how uh, what we were gonna do when we stopped set up and tear down because. Once we stop set up and tear down, then all of the different ministries wouldn't get to coexist together. Right. We'd all be separated, and we we're like, man, like, there's just something about that. It's just something about getting into the, to like the the need greedy, like the the blood, sweat, and tears with everybody. Yeah. That just co- like creates community for sure. Yeah. And you get to you get to like learn things about each other that, you know, when when you're walking by and it's just a you know maybe it just might be Sunday morning and. You don't get to have that interaction, yeah. you know, but during setup and teardown, unless you're very intentional, right? Yeah. Uh, but with, with setup and teardown, it really allows us to have those interactions. So, yeah, yeah I, I always say that, too. I always think, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a hard day. Yeah. Um, although we, we hope one day we have a building, but uh, until then, we, we will, will remain set up and tear yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and it's exciting, whether it's set up and tear down or we have our own location, we're just going to continue to be faithful because yeah. God... God has been faithful. He's yeah. continued to provide. Yeah. And even through a pandemic, we've been able to grow. Yes. It's been crazy. We've baptized yeah. people, seen yeah. people say yes to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, praise God for that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and it's just been amazing. We've had to adapt and pivot. And um, yeah, and we're in here in the studio that we dreamed about. Yeah. You yeah. know, we, you and I you called me one day and you said, hey, I've been thinking about maybe we should get a studio. And I said, it's funny. Anna and I have been thinking about the same thing. Yeah. Uh, funny how the Holy Spirit does that. Yeah. And so we were dreaming about it. Uh, many people got on board and helped financially support this. And yes. it's been such a blessing to have this place. Yeah, you we're know. sitting in that miracle. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. are. And yeah. we've been able to use it for so many things, you know, leadership yes. equip, our venture students, yeah. all of our production for online. And, yeah. you know, it's our space that we get to use. And we've been great stewards of it. And yeah. so... It's been really, really cool. Um, we're, we're getting down here. Time's running out. But oh, my gosh. I know. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Rob, because people probably uh, want to know, like, how, how does the team pick their worship songs? Uh, you know, is it like a, you know, do you take your hat off, put the, yeah, you know, fold so, the... Yeah, uh, so what we do is we get this hat, and we get a couple songs, and we just throw it in here, and we just go like this. And that's... Whatever man, we pick, it's Holy Spirit. That so is so, spiritual right yeah, there, guys. Absolutely. Fully, fully... No. Okay, tell us <laughs> <Yeah>. how really high. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, um, this is really important. This has evolved, you know. And uh, so basically, we, we have three types of songs in every um, worship set. We, it used to be two, now we have three, but it's an I song, a we song, and a God song. That's and, good. and I songs are usually songs that are uh, obviously talking about, you know, personally, us, me, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see a victory, mm. you know. Things like that. We songs. That's um, it's about community again, yeah. which is super important. And God songs is all about um, vertical worship. That's it's awesome. Just praising God. Yeah. So it's it's 
we, we didn't figure it out right away, but honestly, it's been a, it's been a great way to teach through, through our songs. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking about worship, here we go. Are yeah. you ready? Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to go in four, three, three two, two, one. Woo! <laughs> That silence is the enemy Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety Let it rise Let praise arise We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything We sing with all we are we can be your victory so let it rise, let praise arise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall For fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God, we praise you, oh, we praise you, oh, let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea, let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me, let it rise. This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living
can't hold back my breath I gotta let it out I can't hold back my breath I gotta let it out I can't hold back my breath I gotta let it out I can't hold back my breath I gotta let it out I can't hold back my breath I gotta let it out Are still being moved, and strongholds are still being loose. And God, we believe, and yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you.
and the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me good morning church welcome to our online experience my name is Matthew I'm one of the pastors here at Venture and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. If you're new, we want to welcome you. And we say this at Venture, and we want you to hear it on the front end. You do not have to believe to belong here. Um, maybe you're exploring faith for the first time. We want you to know that it is safe here for you. Uh, and we are in a series titled Alignment, because the word over our house in 2021 is alignment. And I am just so blessed uh, because we started uh, doing our 21 days of prayer and fasting, and I hope you've jumped on with us. Uh, maybe you're praying for some things over your life, over your marriage, over your relationship, over your kids. Um, maybe you are just trying to get closer to God in this season. Um, I just hope that uh, whatever it is you are praying for, that God is going to be answering your prayers. We're praying for you and with you, and Anna and I are praying as well for our home and our family and for the church. Um, I'm excited because I'm going to continue the series today, but I'm going to pivot a little bit. As you can tell, I'm not Anna. Anna was supposed to speak uh, the third week of this month, and uh, she's going to anchor the series. But I am going to jump in, and I asked her if it'd be okay uh, to switch, uh, because I think that there is a timely word for us. Uh, in our nation right now, it just feels like it's chaos. I feel like it's upside down. And um, I know that, you know, you probably have been processing um, a lot of things, right? And pausing and uh, filtering and, uh, and, and it just feels heavy, right? It feels so heavy. Um, I, I believe that there's a, a type of response that uh, we are to have as believers in times like this. And Jesus... He gave us a model in scripture that I'm going to take today, and uh, we're going to bridge the, cap, the, the gap, excuse me, um, and we are going to take this um, and, and make it relevant in our life today. It's going to be practical, um, and I believe it's going to be a blessing for, for some of us, and there might be some correcting today, uh, because I believe that people more than ever before need to see a church that's united and not divided. And Venture, I am so excited that we are so diverse in so many ways. And because of that, we have people that are hard right and hard left and everywhere else in between. So that gives us an opportunity. Someone say opportunity. It gives us an opportunity to have intentional conversations with one another, to get to know each other, right? And so that, you know, we're not just putting ourselves around people that talk like us and think like us and sound like us and smell like us and all these different things, right? We got to get across people that are different so that we can get to know them and how they think and why, because uh, there is a reason why they think like that. And so it is such a blessing, right? I believe right now that God's heart is hurt and my heart's hurt because uh, he might be seeing his people, the church, just a little bit divided in this season. It's hard for me to see people using their platforms like social media to post things and, and to put things on their stories that I think if social media was a thing back in the day, like in Jesus' time, he would have never posted some of these things that come across my feed from people that call themselves followers of Jesus. So I really believe that this word is timely, okay? And don't check out, please. I really believe that this is going uh, to challenge many of us and correct some of us and allow us to understand how it will be to, uh, to respond in this season of our life. The title of this message is Disagreeing Without Dividing. Let's pray. Father, I pray for each and every one of us today. Help us, Lord, to come to your word and to allow it to Speak to us in a way that will teach us, Lord, how to respond in this chaotic season that we find ourselves in as a nation. Lord, I know so many people are bothered, 
hurt, upset, and divided. And I know that's not what you desire of your church to be divided. And so I pray today that we would see things that maybe we hadn't seen or ignored. And God, I pray that you would open up our eyes and Lord, I pray that you would soften our hearts. And God, I pray that you give us eyes to see, Lord, these things. We love you, God. We want what you want. Help us, Lord, as we live this thing called life. We want to be more like you and less like us. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen and amen. Hey, any of you guys have multiple kids? I've got four. um, And my three that are a little bit older than Levi because he's eight months, they like to fight sometimes. And Anna and I find ourselves constantly trying to be the voice of reason um, for them and to find unity. And they bicker and fight over the smallest things and sometimes over big things. And I wonder right now um, how God feels with the state of the church and how the world sees it. I believe the world, like I said earlier, the world needs to see a church united, not divided. And as things continue to transpire, as decisions are made over our country, sadly, we're probably going to continue to see some radical division. But you and I, we have a part to play in this narrative. And I believe that we can change the narrative, right? And that has to do with how we individually are going to respond, right, when it comes to some of these things that are happening all around us. We must be reminded that there is a spiritual reality to what is taking place today. And it it happened from the very beginning of time. The enemy's primary strategy was to bring division and deception, okay? And, And his tricks have stayed the same. He's trying to do it again, okay, in 2021. And he wants to get his people separated from one another, He wants to get us confused in our own minds so that we can't connect with God or his people. A divided world needs to see a church that will stand up with one another in love, not agreeing and be unified, right? In the sense of, you know, we're just, we're just these robotic people and we're cookie cut. No, but unified in the sense that we're going to stand in love. And sometimes that's going to come with disagreement. I want to show you today how you can disagree with one another without causing division. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he went to the cross to be crucified, had unity on his heart and his mind for you and for me. He knew that his people would need prayer because we would go through some things in life that the enemy would try to cause to divide us. But us together is what he prayed for, being connected to one another in a way that would bring life and joy and peace to this world. Listen to what it says in John 17, 20 through 21. He says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me throughout their message. Guess what? That's you and me that call ourselves followers of Christ. I pray that they will all be one. Someone say one. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us, that the world will believe you sent me. Jesus is about to get handed over to the authorities, right? And he knows this. And while in agony, knowing what is about to take place uh, on the cross, Praise for us believers. He does this because he knows the human heart condition, okay? We can backslide. We can get duped by the enemy. And we can believe lies that are packaged and shaped into what looks like truth. Division was not something that started in 2021, but it started from the beginning of time. And Jesus says, I pray that they will be one. That's why we need to be a united church, not a divided church. And today, we're going to spend the rest of our time in a story where Jesus is about to do something that confuses his disciples and those that don't even follow him. And he is going to give us a model, okay? 
on how to disagree without causing division. Turn with me to John 4 real quick. See, Jesus spent most of his time teaching and healing and going from town to town. He would go from the northern part of Israel, which was Galilee, and he'd go down to the southern part of Israel, Israel which was Jerusalem. And in, in Jesus' day, there would be a huge divide between the Jews and everybody else, especially this group called Samaritans, okay? Samaritans were half Jews. And because of that, they had some things in common, but not a whole lot, okay? And uh, Jesus is traveling from the southern part at this moment, and he's trying to get his way back up to Galilee. And we're going to see how Jesus interacts. He actually interacts with a Samaritan woman and crosses a bunch of cultural divides. Listen in John 4.4. 4. It starts like this. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Okay, I'm going to pause there for a second. Because historically, there were multiple paths that would go around Samaria. Because remember, Jews and Samaritans did not get along. And Jews definitely didn't want to have any interaction at all. So they would take uh, other routes that would be longer. It'd take a day or a day and a half more. There'd be crazy terrain, but they would be willing to take it to avoid interaction at all costs. And I'm kind of wondering a little if there might be somebody in your life, okay, that when you see them, you immediately want to go around, right? Or if there's maybe a place in town that when you, when you think about it, you immediately want to go around it, right? Maybe there's an individual uh, that, that, that somebody may have disagreed with you in the past, and maybe you even had a blowout, and you're like, I don't want to see that person. I'm going all the way around. Jesus goes straight into the place in conversation that everybody else wants to avoid. John 4, 5 through 6 continues, and it says, Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, okay, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. I'm going to ask you this. How many of you guys during this last year, during COVID-19, have been tired? I'm going to tell you right now, honestly, I'm tired. I'm tired. Um, and and it's, it's been a physical, it's been a spiritual, right? It's been emotional uh, type of battles that we've been going through. And we've had a pivot and there's things and there's ups and downs. And it hasn't been an easy season. And so just think about this. You know, this word is telling us that Jesus was tired from this long walk. Now, that doesn't show weakness, right, and lack of divinity on Jesus. No, it's evidence of his humanity. Jesus was both fully man and fully God, okay? And I know that, I really believe that if he was with us today, he too would be tired leading people to his father during these chaotic times that we live in. So the disciples leave him for a little while. Okay, And Jesus is now sitting at this well, more than likely thirsty and ready for a drink of water. John 4, 7 through 8 says this, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. Now, it was a little fishy that this woman would be there at noontime, okay? If you went for water in the Middle East at noontime, man, it would be, it would be scorching hot. I mean, that is the hottest part of the day. So when women would go get water, it was usually in the early morning, okay? And when you read this story fully through, you understand that she was there at noontime because she was in a place in her life of shame, okay? She wanted to hide this lifestyle that she was living, and she didn't want anybody to see her. She was trying to live in isolation. So you could imagine her face when she's rolling up to this well, and she sees this man sitting there, and she's probably thinking, I hope he doesn't see me. I hope he doesn't see me. And then he tells her, 
Please give me a drink. Have you ever been in a situation before where you see somebody and you really didn't want to be seen at all? I mean, I, I could just imagine, you know, maybe waking up one morning and not having milk and needing milk so badly. And so you, you know, uh, just put a hat on and you put a mask on and you run down to Safeway and you're just hopeful nobody sees you because you didn't brush your teeth, right? And you're in the milk aisle and you open it up and someone from work sees you and you don't have any place to run because it's out in the open and you're hoping they don't come up to you to talk to you because your breast stinks even through the mask, Right? And so have you ever been in one of those moments before where you're like, I do not want to be seen, and then you're seen? See, secretly, this girl was hopeful that Jesus would probably just ignore her and not see her. And this is where we see two cultural divides uh, Jesus crosses in this moment, okay? Number one, he crosses the gender divide. Men should not be talking to women. Not only that, right? Jesus, he's a religious teacher. He is a teacher. And so this is like a double whammy. And number two, Jesus crosses the racial divide. Remember, he is a Jew and Jews would look at Samaritans and literally look at him like dogs. Like that's what they call them dogs, right? Wanting nothing to do with them. And I want you to jot this down because it's so important that you see this. Okay. Point number one is this. Love takes the road less traveled. Love engages in conversations nobody else is willing to have. I was encouraged this summer by two people that come to our church. Shane, who is our student pastor, and Tiffany, who is also uh, a student leader, um, having a conversation with one another that most would probably avoid. See, Shane is a white man and Tiffany is a black woman. And Shane, instead of assuming how she was feeling during George Floyd's death, called her to see if she was willing to talk. His desire was to know how she felt, wanted to know her thoughts and how she was processing it all. Shane didn't want to be ignorant, okay, over things that he couldn't understand because of the culture that he grew up in. That call, that call was out of love. And love takes the road less traveled. Question, when was the last time that you engaged with somebody that saw something different, right? Saw things different than you do. Think about that for a second. I ask this because I believe we are arrogant in areas that we would understand at a deeper, deeper level if we would engage with people polar opposite of ourselves. Not only that, our response toward one another would probably change. John 4, 9. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? The second thing I want you to write down from this is this. Love listens. Love listens. Jesus listened to this woman. He heard her story, asked her questions, and engaged in her issues. James, the brother of Jesus, would talk about the importance of listening. In James 1.19, it says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. You must be quick to listen, okay? Slow to speak, and slow to get angry. But, Sometimes we do the complete opposite. We're quick to ignore. We're fast to speak. And we quickly can get angry. So much of our differences in society would diminish if we would just listen to one another. 
Which leads me to my next question. And I planted this seed earlier. Where is your Samaria? Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's a people group. Maybe you live in Salinas and you know that I will never go down to Chinatown because it is overpopulated with transients. Maybe you say, I'll never go to the east side, right? I'll, I'll go to the north side, the south side, right? I'll go everywhere else, but I will never go to the east side. Or maybe it's a group of people in society that you avoid. Maybe it's people on the extreme right or the extreme left. You know, you're like, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to have conversations with those people. Maybe it's with people in the LGBTQ community. Maybe it's law enforcement or military. Maybe it's people that, you know, follow the, the BLM movement. Maybe it's someone black or white or Asian or Indian. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody that doesn't look like you, talk like you. Maybe it's someone rich or poor or on welfare. I don't know. In your mind, there are people who you have put in a category that are your Samaritans or your Samaria. And guess what? You can have a conversation with them without changing your convictions or your values. It costs you nothing. You might not change your beliefs, but that convo might change your behavior and frustration. And like Jesus, you and I, we can do this. The conversation would continue in John 4, verse 10. Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Jesus is saying, right now, you are only thinking about the physical, but I have something even greater for you. You might be able to relate to this, okay? Because some that might be watching this might have gone to place, to place, to place, dipping your bucket, right, into the well, trying to get satisfaction for your soul, only realizing that you never were fully satisfied. It was never enough and never fulfilled you. And you were chasing this thing over and over and over again. And Jesus is saying, I have something better for you. I have living water for you. Jesus is saying, only if you would know this, you would ask me. He wants to bring you love, joy, and peace. He wants to bring you life and life abundantly. John 4, 13 through 14, Jesus replied. He says, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Notice how Jesus presses into this woman's issues, right? If you read on in the story, you realize he, he presses in. He doesn't walk around Samaria. No, he walks right into it, right? And he talks to this girl about her problems. If you continue to read, you'll, you'll hear that she had four husbands. Jesus, Jesus tells her you have four husband, husbands and the one that you are with right now isn't even your husband. He presses into her issues. Church, I feel like we've gotten to the place where we can't even do this with each other anymore. Why? Why can we no longer lovingly with a, a good posture be able to speak into each other's lives? It's like we've cut each other off because we just want to be how we want to be. But in order to be greater, we have to have people around us that can tell us like, hey, I realize that I've seen some things and they're not the healthiest. And we have friends maybe in our life that have destroyed their marriages because we never said anything. Or we have co-workers that we are around on purpose because God placed us in that workforce for a reason. And we have the opportunity to shine a light. And there are some things where we could be encouragers, but instead of being encouragers, we do the exact opposite. And I, I just believe that there, there is this divide that the enemy is trying to bring within the body. And a part of that is when anybody ever tries to tell you something, you, you push away. As a matter of fact, you hide. You don't want to be around them. And if there's a lifestyle that you live, you will just disconnect. That's not healthy. 
And that's not what God wanted for his body. And sometimes we have to stay put. And sometimes we have to face the truth. And sometimes it's a hard reality. But brother, sister, I'm here to tell you, it's worth it. There is a reason why God placed people around you who love you the way that they do. If they didn't love you, they wouldn't tell you the loving truth that they tell you. Are you with me, church? Jesus modeled this and he corrected this woman in a loving way. What do you do when you would disagree with things in life, especially with what's happening today all around us? Maybe you tolerate, is that you? There are some people that will just sit there and tolerate others. We have been taught that tolerance is love and tolerance is not love, it's apathy, okay? It's you do you and I'll do me and that'll be it. That's not how God wanted us to be united because it's not, it's apathy. Maybe it's cancel. I don't agree with you. You don't agree with me. I'm just gonna cancel. I didn't like what you said. I'm gonna cancel you. I'm gonna delete you from my social media. You don't agree with me with how I view racism. I'm canceling you. You don't agree with me because I'm on the hard right and you're on the hard left. I'm canceling you, right? You don't agree with how I feel. You know, all these things should be like abortion. Then I'm canceling you. Cancel, cancel culture. It is existing right now in our culture and it's making it virtually impossible for us to have civil conversations with one another. So how are we ever going to be united? So if I don't see it like you, I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel you. This is not how we sharpen each other, okay? The better path forward is what? It's love. Love speaks the hard truth in a loving way. Jesus lovingly calls out this woman and exposes her. He exposes her reality that she shamingly has been trying to hide. And maybe you might feel the same way as you read this word. That when you read God's word, you see some things in yourself that you've been trying to run from. Sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow it's truth about us that we don't ever want to be exposed. And like I said earlier, if you have somebody who loves you enough to correct you, they're worth keeping around. Maybe today you've been filled, you, you feel like you've been called out in a way of how you've even been responding to some of these events that have been taking place um, in, in our nation. And maybe you feel like, you know what, I need to filter myself through the word of God. I really haven't been responding in a healthy way. When people hear me talk about things, it's not healthy at all. And it's definitely not like Christ. You don't have to keep on that path. You can change today. You can ask God for forgiveness and ask him for wisdom and discernment on how you move forward. We have talked about a lot today. I wanna to remind you and ask you once again, what and who is your Samaria? The world needs to see a church united, not divided. We can disagree without causing division. In church, we have a lot of work to do. Will you choose today the Jesus model? I think that this word um, is hard for many because we are so strong in how we believe. And, um, you know, they, they would say things like, you can't teach a dog new tricks, right? Um, I'm believing that God is gonna soften places in our heart that we've hardened. Um, I'm believing that he can change the way that we approach things um, and how we do things and how we interact and how we are intentional. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that when you hear this message, that you would consider a different posture if it hasn't been healthy. I'm praying for you. And a matter of fact, I want to take some time to pray right now. Father, I pray for the body. I pray for the church. I pray for our nation. I pray for unity. I pray for the, the chaos that it would, it would stop in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that you would remind us that you have us here for just a time as this. 
to be your hands and feet, to be your mouthpiece, to bring joy in life and truth. And so God, I pray that if there's somebody right now that hasn't been doing that and they call themselves a follower of yours, that conviction would hit so hard internally. I pray God that we would leave this message understanding the Jesus model and wanting to put it into practice in our lives. Lord, we need you and we desire you right now. Come into our conversations, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to come and, and to be peaceful, to be your representatives and to speak on your behalf. And Lord, if we disagree, that's okay because I know that we will at times, but help us to disagree without causing division. Lord, we love you. We give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, there's one more thing I wanna do before we jump off today. Maybe you're new uh, with us and this is your first time and you're exploring faith. I want to encourage you today to give your life to Christ. I know that it is counterculture. It's not something that many people will tell you today to do, but I know that it's the best thing that I was able to do in my life and it changed me forever. Matter of fact, it changed my direction of where I would be going when this life is over. And now I have hope that when this life is over, I will be in eternity with God. And so I'm gonna pray right now that you would make that decision that you would say, um, I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to give my life over to the Lord and I want him to be my Lord and savior. If that's you today, would you pray this prayer with me? But do it because you wanna do it and say it out loud. Say, Jesus, come into my life and make me new. Help me to follow you. Lord, I give you my life today. I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins. Make me brand new. And I believe that you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sins. And he was put into a tomb, but three days later, he rose from the dead. And now one day when I perish from this life, I too will have hope to be in eternity with you. God, help me, guide me, and use me. For it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hey, God bless you. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and you have a great start tomorrow um, as maybe some of you are going to work and, and doing life. But I want you to know that we love you and we miss you and we will see you soon. God bless and take care. Hey Venture, I'm so excited that I get to lead you through our tithes and offering moment. I'm gonna read through Mark and this is chapter 14 verses three through six. It says, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over, her, over his head. Some of those at the table were ignorant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for years' wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, check this out, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? And then verse 9, it says, I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. We can see here that this woman's deed, we can still smell the essence of her giving till this day. Um, one thing we also see in this story is that people didn't get it. And I'm gonna tell you, Venture, people won't get it. You might not get it sometimes, and sometimes you'll have to talk yourself into being obedient and being faithful to Jesus. One of the things I love about this story is that we're able to see um, some parts of the story, but it's silent in others. And one thing that I can only imagine is that this woman must have had a beautiful story to be able to surrender so much to Jesus. Her story would then be able to replicate what her extravagance was gonna be to Jesus. And your story will do the same. The thing that you place value in, whatever that value is, is how you will respond and how extravagantly you will give. I know you have a story. I know I have a story. And I will give out of that place in my heart. And so I'm gonna challenge you today, church, to give out of the story that God's given you, to give out of extravagance because of the extravagant love that God has given you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are. 
thank you because uh, you don't hold back with your gifts because you don't hold back in being extravagant and being kind and being generous, God. And so I pray that we would be a church that would be the same, that we would replicate that blueprint that you've left us to be extravagant in all the things like love and kindness, but also our faithfulness to our giving, God. Would you remind us of the story that you've given us and that out of that place in our heart, we would extravagantly give to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, it's Taylor here from the worship team. I'm so happy that you guys were able to join us today for our online experience. I'm also so excited because next Sunday, we are going to be able to meet in person, weather permitting of course, um, at Rancho Cielo. It's gonna be January 24th. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So again, pray for no rain and I hope to see you there.